The Onlooker Written by Richard C. Mills Day One Thunder crashed angrily overhead as the rain continued its steady downpour. It was mad and crying. Abby pulled her hood down tighter to shield her tear-streaked face. The sky wasn't the only one. She tried to think, but her mind still swirled, reliving the scene that had forced her out into the dark night in painful detail. She gritted her teeth and forced herself to concentrate, running out the replays and through the names of family and friends that she could call for help, anyone that would come get her. Her mind struck upon one, one who would surely come to rescue her, just as he had every time she'd needed it since they'd first met. Choking down another sob, she reached for her phone. He was there before she made the call, standing beside her, arms open wide, ready to embrace her and tell her that he was there, that he cared. He already knew what had happened, but he was a good listener. He wanted nothing more than to hear it again from her own lips. But she didn't move, and she didn't speak. She didn't notice him at all. She just stood there, waiting. Thomas threw the car into park as his headlights cut through the darkness, catching one lonely, drenched figure in their illuminated gaze. The car door slammed shut and he ran to her, ignoring the many puddles he splashed through on his way. In his outstretched hands, he held his leather jacket, still warm and inviting, an offering to his soaked princess. He wrapped it around her and embraced her lovingly before leading her back to his car. Now gripping a steaming thermos while heat from the car vents valiantly tried to dry her, Abby finally began to feel her head clear. She started to relate the story between an outbreak of new sobs and sips of hot coffee. It didn't start well, but as she gained momentum, the dam of words and emotions weakened and then broke loose, spilling its contents into the inside of the car, her words flooding both of them with the most recent tale of pain and regret. The fight had started small, over a simple thing, but like all arguments they'd had recently, it escalated quickly. In minutes, both Abby and her mom were yelling and in tears. That was when Abby had left. Barely pausing long enough to grab a raincoat, she stormed out of the house and into the night. She paused and looked over to Thomas, who was gazing back intently, genuine sadness and concern written on his face. The story drifted off. The rest could be continued another time. Right now, she just wanted to know she was loved. She released her grip of the thermos and reached to grab his hand. As the car began to pull away, one figure remained outside. He had not been invited in. Now alone in the still pouring rain, he watched as the two slowly drove past him, one hand holding the thermos, one hand gripping the wheel, the other two interlocked between them. And as the taillights faded into the darkness, the onlooker's gaze went to his own hands, and a tear slipped from his eye. Abby lay on her back, staring up at her ceiling. She grimaced as another rumble of thunder echoed off in the distance, her old ceiling. Once she had calmed down, Thomas had taken her back to her house and tried to sort out the issues with her parents. They had accepted her back inside and attempted to patch things up, but deep down Abby knew that nothing had changed, and knowing that, she knew she couldn't stay here. Safety had fled this place the moment she had. And with safety, so also had sleep. She turned over restlessly and faced the wall, her mind working on a plan. She knew she couldn't stay here. Tomorrow, she would leave. Day 2 The cell phone vibrated loudly on the nightstand jumping and dancing, 
delighted that someone was calling. Thomas groaned as he woke and reached out to grab the phone, scooping it up before it managed to walk itself off the table. Had it been anyone else, he would have left the phone to its ways in favor of a few more hours of sleep, but he knew who was calling. He'd been expecting it. He had spent a good portion of what night remained up and on the phone, comforting his princess through the sleeplessness that clung to her like a shadow. She had told him her plan, and now she was letting him know that it was time. She was ready. Abby tossed one last pair of shoes into the suitcase and then paused to take stock. This was it. Everything she needed all her most precious and vital belongings crammed into just three suitcases and a backpack. She scanned the room one last time, searching for anything she might have overlooked. She figured she could always come back for something if she needed it, but right now returning to this place was the last thing she wanted to do. Content that everything she could think of was already packed, she walked over to her desk and opened the drawer revealing a thick stack of letters. They were from Thomas, all 49. They were worn and in some places ripped and tattered from being read so many times. But the words on the paper still carried those magical feelings of what life would be like when they were together. They would travel the world, only to conclude that they had already found the best it had to offer. Then they'd settle down somewhere quiet and... The sound of a car outside tore her away from the letters that had once again enraptured her imagination. They still had a long way to go. Thomas was taking classes at a local college and working most of the rest of the time. She had just graduated high school and was still surveying her options. Their future together seemed so far off, and yet it was all she could bring herself to think about. She gently placed the cherished papers in one of the side pockets of her backpack, zipped everything up, and unlocked her door. The door shut for the final time, leaving the onlooker in silence. The lack of possessions had changed the room's appearance, but it was only now that Abby was gone that it felt truly empty. Slowly, he circled the room, looking at the various items that had been left behind. When he reached the large corner bookcase, he stopped. One book in particular caught his attention as it remained on the shelf, lost among the company of other books deemed unneeded. He picked it up and slowly paged through it. It looked brand new, not a tear or folded edge. He had given this to her. The letters and words were his, as were the thoughts and messages they united to spell out. It had been difficult, taking blood, tears, and many sleepless nights to complete, but it was complete. And now it sat here, collecting dust alongside old children's books and bad poetry, a gift unwanted. With the rest of the morning spent shopping, followed by a late breakfast out, Abby began to feel her spirits lift. She sat across from Thomas in the food court, putting the finishing touches on her smoothie while they, in turn, put the finishing touches on their plan. Lisa, one of Abby's friends, had offered to let her stay with her family until she could find a more permanent living arrangement. It was a deal that both Thomas and herself thought she should accept. She would also need a job, and most likely, a car. They worked through Thomas's finances, determining what all he needed and how much he could spare to cover her living expenses. It would be tight, but they could manage until she found a job. Once they finished, they gathered up their papers and empty food trays and headed out. Abby lay awake again as sleep continued to evade her. This whole room was alien to her. She had been here many times before, but had never spent the night, and was amazed how different something can be in the darkness. The gentle buzzing of the overhead fan, 
the constant ticking of the bumblebee clock on the wall, all conspired to keep her restless. Outside the bedroom window a light still shone brightly, catching the trees in its glow and casting their dancing, swaying shadows onto the wall behind her, further adding to the strangeness of the room. With a sigh, she gave up the idea of sleep for a second time and grabbed her phone. At least it would be another long night with Thomas. Day 3 As soon as the hour hand reached six, Abby was up. She quickly got dressed and then stood in front of the vanity mirror, giving herself a once-over. She looked awful. Her hair was tangled and you could spot the bags under her eyes from miles away. She briefly considered trying to do something about it before heading down for breakfast. But without a shower and her full attention, any temporary fix would be futile anyway. Her stomach growled, reminding her less than gently where her true priorities should be. So with a sigh, she tore herself away from the pathetic-looking reflection and opened the door. Down the stairs and to the right was the kitchen, with the dining room located adjacent. A small table sat in the kitchen, where the majority of the meals were eaten, the dining room reserved for holidays, family visits, and guests. Apparently, Abby didn't count. In the kitchen, she found a scattered assortment of Lisa's family, all silently working on their bowls of cereal and the occasional piece of toast. Lisa waved her greetings and asked Abby how she had slept. Abby sat down and reached for a bowl. She told the truth, and Lisa apologized. Then the conversation dropped off and gave way to an uneasy silence as everyone passed around boxes of cereal and questioning glances. Abby could feel the heat of their eyes on her, but pretended not to notice. She knew she looked awful. Two full nights without sleep on top of the emotional impact of what she'd been through. Who were they to judge her? Breakfast passed by, and the house became a blur of activity as the various children readied themselves for school, screaming and yelling and searching for backpacks. Then, one by one, as their school bus pulled up, they would disappear, and the house would grow a little less chaotic. Shortly after the last child departed, Lisa's mom emerged as well, wearing a suit, her hair tied back in a professional-looking bun. They exchanged a few cordial words, and then she too left, leaving Abby as the lone occupant of the house. Head still spinning from the morning's frenetic routine, Abby made her way back upstairs, unsure what to do next. She hadn't expected to be abandoned so soon. She knew her appearance still desperately needed some attention, but now that her appetite was sated, she began to feel the exhaustion set in. Maybe she would be able to sleep. It was at least worth a try. She trekked back to her room, settled back down in bed, and closed her eyes. The nightmare came as the worst ones always do, unexpected and unprovoked. It was not the offspring of a horror film viewed the night before, nor the remains of an undigested meal. It came straight from where all true terror comes, the deepest reaches of her own heart. It was a vision of screaming parents and crying children, pouring rain and crashing thunder. A vivid replay of that stormy night, but with one difference. There was no Thomas, no friend to come and comfort her, no night to rescue her, no savior from the darkness and pain. No one. She was all alone. Abby awoke with a cry, her body rigid, beads of cold sweat gathering on her brow. It was all just a dream, wasn't it? She looked around, trying to place herself. The overhead fan hummed gently as the blades zipped around in tight circles, chilling her body but doing nothing to relieve her frantic mind. Thomas, was he all right? 
She punched the speed dial and the phone started ringing. She tried to reassure herself that it was all just a bad dream, that Thomas would pick up and everything would be fine. She took a deep breath, forcing the rising panic back down, and waited. The phone kept ringing. The onlooker watched over Abby as she lay slumped in the corner, crying despondently. Thomas hadn't answered. Not the first time, or the second, or any of the numerous other times she'd called him. Panicking, she began calling every number she knew for him. Home phone, old cell, no one ever picked up. She sank to the floor, fearing the worst had happened, yet unable to do anything about it. She had no car, it would be too far to walk. All she could do was despair. The onlooker held his hand outstretched towards her, waiting for her permission to help her up and wipe away the tears, ready to tell her that everything was all right, that she shouldn't worry. But she didn't hear him, and her head remained buried in her hands. When Lisa returned home, she found Abby, hair still disheveled and eyes puffy and red. Shocked at the sight, Lisa began to cry too and asked what had happened. Abby managed to choke out the story, and soon new tears flowed as Lisa contributed her own to the cause. At 11.47, Abby's phone finally rang. She jumped, and in her anxiety fumbled the phone, almost missing the call. It was Thomas. Before she could say anything, he was apologizing, explaining the situation and asking her forgiveness. One of his co-workers had called in sick, forcing Thomas to work a double shift. He'd meant to let her know, but his phone battery had died, most likely from the heavy and unanticipated use these past two days. She yelled at him. It was the first time she'd ever done it. She hadn't wanted to, and she desperately hoped she would never have to again, but she couldn't stop herself. Then she broke down again as the weight and pent-up tears rushed out of her. Thomas apologized again, over and over, promising he'd make it up to her. He had to work again tomorrow, but his weekend was free, and he would give it to her. Day 4 In light of events from the previous day, Lisa decided that Abby probably shouldn't be alone again so she skipped school and tried to convince her guest that a day out would do her some good. A group of friends were getting together. Some Abby knew from various circles. Others were but faces and names unknown. At first, Abby had resisted, for despite being a social person, at the moment, her thoughts were centered solely around spending time with one individual in particular. In the end, however, she let herself be talked into it. The park bustled with activity as people laughed and lounged, chatted and played games. Birds chirped and a gentle breeze rummaged through the leaves. It was a beautiful day, and Abby was not enjoying it. She sat with her back against a tree, her gaze shifting between a young couple sharing a meal and the infrequent kiss, two other lovers in the midst of a romantic walk, and the noticeably vacant spot beside her. She wanted Thomas. Her life felt incomplete without him. Lisa had long since disappeared in search of rarely seen friends, leaving Abby alone with just her thoughts. And today, her thoughts were not kind to her. Abby was not alone. The onlooker sat quietly beside her, ready to talk or sing or just spend time together silently enjoying each other's company, willing to fill the emptiness beside her, if she'd only let him. But she didn't. She didn't seem to notice him sitting there. Or maybe she just wasn't looking. A shadow loomed over Abby, blocking out the sun and causing her to look up. 
Her sudden hope that against all odds Thomas had arrived to spend time with her were violently destroyed as quickly as they had arisen. A boy, roughly her age or a little younger, stood in front of her, the sun behind him outlining his face with an angelic glow. He introduced himself and told her that he had heard what had happened and that he knew someone that wanted to help her. Apparently, word about her situation had traveled fast, though, with the way Lisa's mouth could move, Abby supposed she had been lucky it had taken this long to get out. She collected her thoughts and returned her attention to the boy in front of her. He was gazing at her expectantly, as if waiting for a reply. She realized she hadn't been paying attention, apologized, and asked him to repeat himself. He dutifully did so, and it was then that Abby noticed the twinge of fear in his voice and the slight tremble of his hands. He was nervous. Her attitude softened a little, and she thanked him warmly for thinking of her. Then, to help put his mind at ease, she mentioned that she already knew who he was talking about, but that right now she had Thomas, and, at least for the time being, that was all she needed. Throughout the day, others came by and tried to talk to her, and Abby tried her hardest to be polite, but her soul just wasn't in it. She didn't want to talk to them. She wanted Thomas. She needed him. She wanted to be inside of his strong arms, to feel his grip around her and know that she was safe and loved. She knew he couldn't be with her all day every day. After all, he had his own life. But her mind quickly jumped to argue before she could stop it. Hadn't he agreed and committed himself to this relationship? Wasn't she now supposed to be a big part of it? Abby walked through the new bedroom door exhausted, but also excited. It had been a long day, but she'd made it through. Now all that separated her from a weekend alone with Thomas was a restful night. Hopefully. Day 5 It was here. Abby jumped out of bed and tore through her morning preparations in a fury of excitement. The day had finally come. When she finished getting ready, she called Thomas. He answered on the second ring, avoiding any more disastrous situations, and further filling Abby's heart with glee. He told her he was in his car and would be there soon. The day passed by in a blur of shopping and eating out, long walks and the making of many new and wonderful memories. Abby pledged to remember and cherish each one, locking them away in her heart to lovingly unpack them whenever she could. The onlooker followed along behind them as they hit shop after shop and walked through paths and over bridges, hoping that he might be included or at the very least remembered in the day's activities. As the day closed, Thomas announced that he had something special planned, one last thing before the evening concluded. Abby could hardly contain her excitement as they drove to the unknown destination, constantly asking Thomas for a hint about where they were going, but he just smiled and kept driving. The movie theater was crowded as usual, but to Abby, it felt like she and Thomas had it all to themselves. With a tub of popcorn nestled between them and a large soda to share, they sat in anticipation as the previews rolled through, occasionally leaning over to comment about the highlighted movie's potential, or to silently giggle about the noisy occupant of the seat to their right. Then the movie started. Highly acclaimed, it had the perfect blend of action and romance, suspense and tender moments. The acting was superb, the story well-crafted, and for two hours, Abby forgot her problems and was sucked away with Thomas on an incredible adventure. Three rows back, the onlooker sat with his face in his clenched hands, torn between anger and sorrow. Why were they here? The movie invoked his name often, though never fondly. But what grieved him the most was the thought that throughout the past few days, 
in the midst of all the trials, emotions, the good days and bad. This was the first time he'd been mentioned. Day six. Abby was in paradise. Arm in arm with her hero for the second full day in a row, she felt near giddy with joy. As they stopped by a stone fountain to let the gentle mist dance across their skin, she couldn't help but think that their future together seemed closer than ever. Her setup now, though still functioning, was far from permanent, and she knew it would probably only last somewhere from a few months to a year more. Then she'd have to do something different, and she desperately hoped that the something different would have to do with Thomas. Not a day went by that she wasn't dreaming of the day when they were united, and he could take her away from all of it, for good. But close as it seemed, it was still a long way off, and there were other problems to deal with as well. Abby's parents had called and left a message on her phone earlier that day, letting her know that they wanted to enlist the aid of a counselor to help them work through the situation. They wanted her to check her schedule, and let them know when she had an opening. That worried her, but she had decided to deal with that later. Right now, together with Thomas, her family situation seemed little more than an old scar numb with age, and the last thing she wanted to do was reopen the wound. She pushed the thoughts out of her mind and clutched tighter to Thomas's muscular arm. She would worry about all that later. She wasn't going to let her wishes or fears ruin the day. They walked silently, basking in each other's company, until they came across a large stream that cut through the path. Abby was about to suggest they turn around, but all that came was a sharp and unexpected gasp as she found herself face to face with Thomas. In one fluid motion, Thomas had swept her off her feet and up into his arms. Now holding her gently, he slowly forded the moving water. It was in that moment that she realized it. And even if she had wanted to, she wouldn't have been able to stop the laugh that came from deep within her soul. She was not alone. Her savior would help her. Let the future come. Let the world bring its worst. As long as she had Thomas, as long as she knew he would be there to rescue her from her problems, then she knew she'd be okay. Day 7 Standing in front of the vanity, Abby surveyed her appearance. She enjoyed dressing up. She always had. But today, her eyes didn't sparkle with the same enthusiasm. They were tired and weak, and betrayed her true feelings. She had reached the end of heaven. After today, her weekend with Thomas would conclude, and he would be swallowed back up by his duties of school and work. She grimaced. Four days seemed like such an eternity. It took all her willpower to hold her tears in, but she couldn't afford to have to redo her makeup. She glanced at the clock. Thomas would be there in fifteen minutes. At least she still had today. She looked in the mirror one last time and silently determined that this would be the best day of them all. The sermon had started off well. The pastor was articulate and full of zeal, and his message had a fresh and original take. But midway through, the trappings fell away revealing him once again leading his congregation down a path well-trodden, hammering home points they'd heard many times before. At first they'd pretended to be interested, but by the time the minister reached his seventh point, people's stomachs were growling and their children restless and out of patience. At last the organist began the postlude, and everyone rose to sing. The pastor gave the benediction, said the final prayer, and the church dismissed. 
The onlooker scanned the room, searching. She used to always meet him here. She would seek him out, her eyes bright with joy, and they would sit and spend hours talking together. It had been one of his many highlights of the morning, but now... He finally managed to catch a glimpse of her, standing near the back in a green dress that matched her eyes, hand in hand with Thomas, as they conversed politely with the elderly couple in front of them. Many would say she looked beautiful, and she did. But he could see what others did not. He knew. He watched as Abby scooted out with Thomas without a hello, a hug, or so much as a wave. All he could see were those same joy-filled eyes that once pointed in his direction, that showed her deep faith, trust, and fierce love. Now gazing intently at Thomas, and the onlooker wept. The Onlooker was written, directed, and produced by Richard C. Mills and narrated by Georgiana Mills. Musical score was created and produced by Jack Francis, Dan Morrissey, Philip Curran, John Herberman, Philippe Adorno Vassal, 1M1 Music, Dreamsight Music, and Dan Philipson. <laughs>